Jobs moved from Illinois to Wisconsin. Wisconsin contestant on The Voice faces possible elimination. Two rollover crashes Monday morning. These stories and much more on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Wednesday, December 5th, 2018. There were two rollover accidents in Sheboygan County on Monday. Or one happened around 8.45 a.m. on Blueberry Lane near Waldo when an SUV hit a patch of ice, lost control, and rolled over in the ditch. The driver was hospitalized with suspected serious injuries. The second accident happened just before 11 a.m. on Highway 28 west of County Road V, where Chevy Monte Carlo lost control and rolled onto its roof. That driver had minor injuries. A former priest accused of sexually molesting at least three boys in Wisconsin, including one from Merrill, is being held on a $500,000 bond. Thomas Erickson made a court appearance in Hayward Tuesday where a judge set the bond after considering the circumstances surrounding the three cases. The former leader of St. Peter's Catholic Church in Sawyer County is facing one count each of first-degree sexual assault of a child, second-degree sexual assault of a child, and second-degree sexual assault of an unconscious victim. Erickson will return to court on December 12th for a preliminary hearing. Until then, if he can post the cash bond, he must turn over his passport and is not allowed to have any contact with anyone under the age of 18. The Wausau Daily Herald reports that one of the victims is a 50-year-old teacher from Merrill who filed complaints against Erickson seven years ago. Erickson later admitted to fondling the boys at St. Peter's in the village of Winter and at two other locations, despite the admission charges against Erickson were not filed until two years later. He was arrested in the Twin Cities last month. Seal Right Door is moving 80 jobs from Rockford, Illinois, across the Wisconsin border to Beloit. The change is part of a $16 million facility expansion, and the state contributed about $250,000 in tax incentives. Company officials say that the new facility will have the state-of-the-art equipment that will increase efficiency, something they say was not available at their current location. The new site in the Wisconsin State Line Industrial Park will be open in early 2019. Seal Wright operates eight plants around the United States and manufactures commercial and residential doors that are sold through big box and building material retailers. A slate of bills that would weaken the powers of Governor-elect Tony Evers and Attorney General-elect Josh Call have been approved in the lame duck session of the state legislature. Evers has called the session by the Republican-controlled legislature a power grab and anti-democratic. Call has warned that some of the bills will face legal challenges and will make it difficult for the legislature and the new administration to work together. Among the changes, a bill that passed Wednesday morning for a work requirement for a single able-bodied adult who are on Badger Care, the legislature would also get oversight over any request for federal waivers for welfare programs. A separate bill would pre prevent the governor from withdrawing from a multi-state lawsuit that challenges Obamacare, and the legislature would also have new powers to intervene in lawsuits involving the state, an area usually handled by the Attorney General. Financial settlements that the AG negotiates would be subject to legislative oversight. 
the legislature would get to make additional appointments to the board that controls the Wisconsin Economic Development Agency. The state Senate failed by one vote to pass a bill that would have protected those with pre-existing medical conditions. Two GOP senators, David Craig and Chris Kapinga, defeated the bill by voting against it. They wanted the state to create a high-risk insurance pool. That item was not included in the bill. The legislature also voted to limit early voting to two weeks before an election. A similar bill had been struck down by a federal judge, and the current version will also face an almost certain court challenge. All of the bills need to be signed by Scott Walker before he leaves office in January. The state Senate lacked the votes for a tax incentive package for Kimberly Clark. U.S. President Donald Trump has taken another swipe on Twitter at his French counterpart, Emmanuel Macron, prompted by Macron's woes over violent protests against fuel taxes. I am glad that my friend Emmanuel Macron and the protesters in Paris have agreed with the conclusion I reached two years ago, Trump tweeted late on Tuesday. The Paris Agreement is fatally flawed because it raises the price of energy for responsible countries while whitewashing some of the worst polluters, said Trump, referring to a global deal on the environment drafted in Paris in late 2015. Earlier this week, French Prime Minister Edouard Philippe decided to suspend planned increases to fuel taxes for at least six months in response to weeks of sometimes violent protests, marking the first major U-turn by Macron's administration in 18 months in office. The Wisconsin Badgers rallied in the second half and beat Rutgers 69-64 to Monday night at the Kohl Center. Wisconsin did not lead in the game until a Nate Ruvers three-pointer at the 18.05 mark of the second half after the Badgers started the half on a 13-4 run. The Badgers are now 8-1 and their best start to a season since 2014-2015. Wisconsin is six spots higher in this week's top 25 coaches poll, and the Badgers moved up from 22nd to 16th. Wisconsin will travel to Marquette Saturday afternoon, and the game time is 4 o'clock p.m. And finally, Wisconsin's contestant on The Voice could have been out after Tuesday's show. Baron native Chris Crows is facing elimination on the NBC talent program. Crows performed Colin Bat Baton Rouge by Garth Brooks on Monday, and his coach Blake Shelton said that he is a dark horse in the competition and that everyone needs to start taking him seriously. Two contestants were eliminated on the Tuesday night while Crows advanced. He needs to advance through two more elimination rounds to make it to the final. And that is all we have for this week. Join me again next time for another recap of our local news. From all of us at Community News Review, have a great day. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.